Hi everyone, welcome to this video. This is a presentation for NYU Shanghai Machine Learning course in Spring 2017. I'm glad to present our project here, Towards Scaled Invariant CNN. My partner's name is Yu Gai, a computer science major sophomore at NYU Shanghai, and I'm Qi Huang, a data science major sophomore. First of all, let me introduce our research question. So, in our research, we found that the convolutional neural network performs poorly when handling tasks involving objects varying scales. Say, we train on a small cat on the left, and then we try to predict the big cat on the right. How can we improve CNN's performance by modifying its structure? The reason why this research is interesting or important is basically two. First of all, speaking of academia interest, human vision system can already achieve this goal easily. However, the current AI cannot, so this is very interesting. Second of all, speaking of application engines, it is hard sometimes to collect multi-scale data set and, and that create problems. So, for instance, when you are designing an official recognition system for airport security check, the government only have citizen's ID card photo, which are basically in the same size or scale, and then you have to use this kind of images data set to train a model that can recognize faces in real life, which are usually in different scales. In this scenario, a powerful CNN will be really handy. Okay, so here comes to our part A. We want to detect the problem first. Okay, so our first experiment shows that CNN is incapable to predict different scale objects when it is trained only in a single scale. We try to train our CNN on a single scale MNIST dataset and then test that CNN on various scaled MNIST dataset. Basically, MNIST is a dataset consisting of hundreds of thousands of handwritten digits. So, for our dataset, um, the training set is basically the original MNIST images, but just put on the same unified background. Um, for the, our validation set, we are actually randomly scaling the MNIST images using scaling factors randomly generated from 1.0 to 2.0. There are 10,000 validation images in total. And the test set is generated in a similar way as the validation set. So here, there are some examples. On the left, you can see the original MNIST set, uh, MNIST data set we use for training and they are basically numbers in the same scale. On the right, there are modified validation test data set. Basically, there are numbers in different scales. So here are the two neural network architecture we use in our first experiment. Uh, the first one is LeNet, which is basically original neural network used by Ian Lecun on, in 1998 on MNIST. The second one is ResNet. It is a deep convolutional neural network with a lot of nice property, designed by Kai Minghe and L in 2015. Uh, basically, ResNet represents the state of the art of convolutional neural network architecture. Um, so we do our experiment on these two models, and the benchmark result are actually kind of surprisingly similar. Uh, we both see the great slip in performance from approximately 1% error rate to approximately 40% error rate. Um, yeah, so this is a great slip, and no matter we use the old model or the very late, latest model, the CNN performs poorly. Uh, our second experiment shows that it is costly to change CNN to handle scale variant tasks uh, if we simply change CNN using dataset containing objects of different scales. Uh, for the experiment, we basically change CNN, which is LeNet, with different numbers of filters in each layer, uh, which can represent different capacity of a CNN, and then we change this bunch of CNNs on a modified MNIST dataset with variant scales. The result is that scale variation in training dataset is not very challenging if the capacity, i.e. Um, the, the number of filters in each layer, is sufficient enough. However, otherwise, the scale variance is kind, can be kind of challenging. So look at the graph. Uh, when the number of filters is 2, you can actually see a huge jump in test error from 0.4, which is 40%, to 50%. I would say over 50%. This is a huge So. Part B, uh, we're trying to find a solution first in theory. Okay, here, the big picture is how can we make neural network understanding the, instead of just memorizing scales? Here, we can think about scales as a kind of patterns. So, the solution to handle multi scale problem is actually the solution to handle a lot of patterns problem. Uh, first of all, we can just memorize all the patterns of different scales. We can tell or we can teach the CNN that a big cat is one pattern and a small cat is another pattern. The second solution is that we can teach the CNN to understand the idea of scales and then apply the idea of scale to different images. 
uh, we can actually try to let our CNA understand big cat and small cat are basically all cats. So we look for inspiration from our fields and from computational neuroscience, we found that some neuroscientists claim that uh, blurring images can improve the robustness of a vision system to scale variation. And the key to blurring an image is to use Gaussian filter. So in theory, we can actually try convolving the image by the Gaussian filter. So the Gaussian filter is a bivariate Gaussian distribution centered at a current position our current pixel and it's parameterized by standard deviation. Basically, we use this Gaussian filter to generate a weight map for the input. Uh, for simplicity, you can think about Gaussian filter, it's just a bell curve in 3D. If the expression just now is not that clear, no worry, we're going to walk you through a Gaussian distribution, sorry, a Gaussian filter example. So here, assuming our input image is just 3x3 and you have a 3x3 weight map, the weight map gives you different weight to different locations on the input image, and the weight changes as the focus of our Gaussian filter vary. We start from focusing at the upper left corner. So, uh, by focusing on here, the upper left corner has the highest weight, and the adjacent, uh, adjacent location have slightly lower weight, and then location that is even further have even less weight. And then we use this first weight map to convolve our input and then you can get a result, which is the summation of 1, point, 1 times 1 plus 0 0.8 times 2 plus blah 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 is actually sector, and that gives you 25.7. And then it comes to our second weight map. The second weight map is basically very similar to the first weight map, except for the fact that the center or the focus now shift from the up left corner to up middle. And then we convolve the input map using the second weight map in exactly the same weight, and then put the result which is 25.5 at the second location. Okay, so here are some results of our Gaussian filters. You can see that basically the higher the variance is the Gaussian filter, the more blurring is the image. Okay, so actually Gaussian filter has very good, pro uh, very good property, which is its differentiability. Uh, basically the idea is that the only parameters that can be varied in a Gaussian filter um, is the sigma, and we're trying to find the best set of sigma for our model. If you want to find the optimal sigma, we need gradient descent accent, and then we need if we need gradient, we need back propagation. And only when a function is differentiable can we do back propagation on it. Nonetheless, calculating the gradient for a Gaussian filter is really computationally costly. So the idea is that maybe we can just find an approximation that is computationally easier, and use that to approximate the effect of Gaussian filter. So, here comes part C. We actually try to solve the problem with approximation. And the approximation we came up is called multi-scale pooling. The idea is that we actually try to discretize the probability distribution, uh, which is the Gaussian filter, into this kind, the discretized version. Uh, basically, we're trying to approximate the effect with concatenated pooling layers of different scales. So here is an example um, of our multi-scale pooling, and we're trying to walk you through. So suppose we are centered at the average pooling. We are centered the average pooling at the location of number six. First of all, we did a three by three average pooling, uh, which basically you look at all the adjacent number of six, and then you add them together, and then you divide it by nine, which gives you six. And then we still center at six, and we did a five by five average pooling layer. Basically here, you, you just sum up all the numbers and all the zeros, zeros are the paddings, and then you divide the summation by 25, and that gives you 5.44. 5, uh, 5 the output at position 6 is basically 6 plus 5.44, and that gives you 11.44. Um, this, this thing, what we call is that we concatenate these two pooling layers, the results together. The conclusion is that pixel value closer to the center are calculated for more times, and therefore it naturally has higher weight. Remind that um, this is also what achieved by the Gaussian filter, because Gaussian filter's idea is basically um, the more closer of your location to the center or the focus, the higher weight it has, and which achieved the same result here using multi-scale pooling. So we trying to do an experiment. The technique of multi-scale pooling is then tested on the dataset used for second benchmark. 
basically, CNN equipped with MSP is compared with a normal CNN. Um, so here are some implementation details of our experiment. Uh, you can see we manually define a layer of model scale pooling first, and then um, we define our neural network with that particular layer, and then we pass through our data through the layer first, and then pass through to a standard neural network structure. And then finally, we try to chain this neural network with some code. Basically, the experiment is carried out on MXNet and MinPy, and you may want to look them up. So here's the result. The result is very good. So basically, the result shows that MSP slightly improved the test accuracy. And also, MSP trying to boost the convergence of our algorithm. Uh, basically, with MSP, the neural network can learn to, to test uh, to detect this kind of multi-scale pattern more quickly and therefore with less computation. And this result is achieved by different filters settings. Okay, so here comes to our conclusion. Um, the first thing we figure out is that we can design a convolutional scheme to best understand patterns of different scale is actually the key to scale invariant neural network. The second finding is that Gaussian filter can be regarded as a novel convolutional layer whose receptive field size can actually be changed continuously and is optimizable by training its variance. The third finding is that multi-scale pooling provides a nice and efficient approximation for our Gaussian filter. By varying pooling size or the number of filters or adding weights to the filters, we can actually make NFC trainable. This part we haven't conducted in our experiment and hopefully we will add it in the future. So, Thank you for your watching, and if you have any nice comments or suggestions, please just leave them below. Thank you so much. Okay, so the benchmark details. Um, so we evaluate our CNN validation set every each epoch, and test accuracy is acquired by evaluating the best model achieving optimal validation accuracy on the test set. A test accuracy in the original MNIST standard set is also presented for reference. This slide is basically about some subtle details of our experiment. Essentially, we control all the other hyperparameters the same across two models in the experiment.